Dear students, today we will talk about very interesting science, very interesting subject, which is called embryology. So, what is embryology? Embryology is the science which deals with development of the organism and also including development of tissues and inner organs and organ systems. So, embryology studies embryogenesis. What is embryogenesis? Embryogenesis is the process of development of the organism from fertilization until the moment of its independent existence in the external environment. Intrauterine embryonic human development continues for 280 days, 40 weeks, 9 calendar months or 10 lunar months. What are the stages of human embryogenesis? Here we can see the main stages of human embryogenesis and we divide them into early stages and late stages. Here we can see stages and their results. So the first stage of human embryogenesis is fertilization, it's day one. And result of this stage is zygote, it's unicellular organism, unicellular embryo. Next stage is cleavage. It continues during first week of embryogenesis and results in the formation of blastula. Next stage is gastrulation and it results in the formation of three embryonic layers. And also there are stages of axial organs development and formation of body of embryo, which take place in the same time with gastrulation. Late stages of human embryogenesis include histogenesis, is formation of tissues, and organogenesis, is development of systems of organs. Early stages of human embryogenesis also are called embryonic period and late stages they include also fetal period. So beginning from week 13 we can call human embryo fetus. So let's begin from first week of embryogenesis and let's talk about cleavage. So as you already know Embryogenesis begins from fertilization, which results in the formation of unicellular embryo, which is called zygote. Here we can see zygote, its microphotograph and diagram, which shows zygote. It has cytoplasm and also there are pronuclei in cytoplasm. First one, its nucleus from mother, it was nucleus of the ovum. And another one, it's pronucleus from father, it's male and female pronuclei. They contain half of genetic material. Each one contains 23 chromosomes and together they contain 46 chromosomes. So complete set of chromosomes for a new organism. Also there is cytoplasm and cytolemma of this cell. And zygote is surrounded with zona pellucida, which was present in ovum. It was surrounding ovum and now it surrounds zygote. So here we can see structure of the unicellular organism. After the fertilization, this cell immediately enters in the mitosis. Two pronuclei, they lost their membranes and chromosomes, they enter in the cytoplasm. So zygote enters in mitosis and this special type of mitosis is called cleavage. So here we can see pronuclei, they lost their membranes and they form metaphase plate of first mitotic division of new organism. Let's look once again. Here we can see all 46 chromosomes which form metaphase plate. So there are two zygote pronuclei, male and female pronuclei. And stage of their common existence is called syncarion. So here we can see formation of metaphase plate and mitosis begins immediately after the fertilization. So zygote is divided into two cells, into two daughter cells which are called blastomeres. Here we can see two blastomeres which are surrounded with zona pellucida. Then one of blastomeres is divided into two daughter cells. Then another one is divided into two daughter cells. So we call this process cleavage. It's mitotic divisions of zygote and blastomeres, but what is the difference between typical mitosis and cleavage? 
In cleavage, a uh, G1 phase of interface is almost absent, so cells they are not growing between the divisions, and common volume of all cells is the same, but number of cells increases. So here we can see common volume. Let's go to they got common volume of all cells is the same. They got it's a huge cell. Then two blastomeres which are smaller than they got. Which one is half of they got? Then cells become to be smaller and smaller, but their number increases and common volume is the same. That's why we call this cleavage. It's not the typical mitosis. It's mitotic divisions which follow each other and G1 phase of interface when cell is growing. It's almost absent. So now here we can see a stage of four blastomeres. They continue their divisions and after some divisions we receive this stage of embryo, of embryonic development and we call this morula. It's morula. It's nodule of cells which are tightly packed and they are surrounded with zona pellucida. Then those cells, they begin to produce fluid which moves those cells and forms cavity. And next stage it will be blastula. Here we can see blastula or blastocyst. And main difference between morula and blastula is that blastula has cavity which is called blastocell. And morula doesn't have this cavity. Also, another difference is that morula has bigger cells than blastula because cells they continue their divisions and they become to be smaller and smaller, but their number is increased. So blastula has more cells than morula. So morula, then next stage it's blastula. And result of cleavage is formation of blastula. Morula is intermediate stage of development and cleavage results in the formation of blastula. So here we can see cleavage in human embryogenesis and let's characterize this cleavage. Here we can see cleavage of different animals, of they got of different animals, thrablastomeres, zona pellucida, which keeps those blastomeres together, and all those blastomeres they form First of all, they form morula and then they will form blastula. Here we can see also cleavage of different embryos of different animals. And here we can see increase in number of cells and decrease in their volume of each individual cells, but common volume of all cells is the same. So let's characterize cleavage in human embryogenesis. First of all, its complete cells are completely divided from each other. It's complete division of cells. Another characteristic is it's asynchronic. In some uh, animals it's synchronic, so there are following stages of 2, 4, 8, 16, 32 blastomeres, etc. But in human embryogenesis we also have stage of 3 blastomeres, 5 blastomeres, so blastomeres undergo their divisions not in the same time. That's why we call human cleavage asynchronic. And also third characteristic of human cleavage is subequal. Cleavage of human zygote of human blastomeres is subequal. Uh, in some embryos, in some animals, it's equal, uh, and those cells, blastomeres, all the blastomeres are the same, exactly the same. Uh, sometimes in some animals it's unequal, some cells are big, some cells are small, but in human embryogenesis it's subequal. Cells are almost the same, but not the same. That's why we call cleavage subequal. So we have morula, which has a cavity, and then it forms blastula, which has cavity, which has blastocell, and also it has wall which is made up of blastomeres and it's surrounded with zona pellucida. It's blastula result of the cleavage. So here we can see cleavage of human embryo. Here we can see two blastomeres. It's morula and it's blastocyst or blastula. And here we can see following stages of human embryogenesis. It's, it's second day, it's third day and day five it's blastocyst. It's result of cleavage. And let's look once again what happens, what is going on during first week. Here we can see division of blastomeres, it's morula, and then those cells will produce 
fluid which will fill the space inside this embryo and it will form blastocell and this embryo will, called, will be called blastula. So it's going on during first week of embryogenesis. And result of cleavage is formation of blastula. So result of cleavage is blastula. And uh, also there are two terms. Blastula and blastocyst. I think you know those terms. So what is the difference between terms blastula and blastocyst? We can call this structure with both names. We can call this blastula, we can call this blastocyst. But why do we have two terms? So blastocyst is the special name of human blastula. There are different animals and they have different kinds of blastula. Some uh, animals they have holoblastula, steroblastula. Here we can see blastula of frog. It's called amphiblastula. So amphibia they have amphiblastula. But human blastula and blastula of another mammalians is called blastocyst. So blastocyst is special name of human blastula. And we can apply both names in human embryology. So blastocyst is kind of blastula which is characteristic for human embryo. So what are the parts of human blastula or parts of human blastocyst? It has two parts. It has embryoblast, inner cell mass, and trophoblast, outer cell mass, inner and outer parts of blastula. Only embryoblast will form embryo. Only those cells will form embryo. But why do we have trophoblast? It forms wall of this blastula, of this blastocyst. So it's structure like bubble and it has wall. And why do we have trophoblast? Trophos it means nutrition, it means feeding. So trophoblast will provide feeding nutrition of this embryo. So it will form chorion and later it will form placenta, which will provide nutrition of embryo. And only cells of embryoblast will form embryo, different parts of embryo. So note those two parts of blastocyst. And let's look later. And later we will look what will happen to embryoblast. So what is so all those processes cleavage it's going on during first week of embryogenesis. Fertilization takes place in the ampulla of fallopian tube, and beginning from fertilization, embryo is migrating into the cavity of uterus during first week, and on day five till day seven. It achieves cavity of uterus, and here on day seven, it's attached to the wall of uterus, and it's called implantation. So embryo needs some feeding; it needs to be attached to the wall of uterus, and then it undergoes implantation. So implantation is the process of attachment and embedding of the embryo in mucosa of the uterus, which is called endometrium. Later we will study this topic, female reproductive system, and we will study structure of endometrium and what is going on during implantation with more details. So uh, it occurs on seventh day of embryonic development. And let's look. Uh, here we can see uh, blastocyst. It's trophoblast, embryoblast, but it's still surrounded with zona pellucida and uh, embryo cannot be attached to the wall of uterus because of this envelope. So what will happen? This zona pellucida will be broken and embryo will excite from this zona pellucida. And this process, when embryo excites from zona pellucida, is called hatching. After hatching, embryo is able to be attached to the wall of uterus, so it will undergo implantation. Here we can see endometrium, its wall of uterus, it has blood vessels, it has glands, its connective tissue. So we will study this with more details in topic female reproductive system. But let's look what will happen. Here we can see blastocyst is present in the cavity of uterus. It's looking for the most convenient place for its uh, existence. It chooses the place 
and it undergoes attachment to the wall of uterus. It's called adhesion. It's first stage of implantation. So first stage of implantation is called adhesion. And then uh, it begins invasion. Those cells, they form inside your trophoblast structures like roots of plants. They are growing inside the wall of uterus and they destroy tissues of uh, uterine endometrium. And embryo goes deeper in the wall of uterus. It's embedding of the embryo and it's called invasion. It's second stage of implantation. So first stage is adhesion, second stage is invasion. And what are the ways how embryo receives the nutrients? Before the implantation, embryo receives nutrients from yolk inclusions, which were present in the cytoplasm of ovum. They were present in cytoplasm of the ecosera nutrients from mother. And embryos um, eat those inclusions before the implantation. During the invasion, embryo uh, receives nutrients from destroyed wall of uterus, from uterine glands, from tissues. So this nutrition is called histotrophic. It eats tissues. So histo, it means tissues. And this nutrition is called histotrophic. And then trophoblast, which will form chorion, it grows and achieves blood vessels, mother's blood vessels. And blood from blood vessels forms lacuna, cavities filled with blood. And embryo begins to receive nutrients from mother's blood. And we call this type of nutrition hematotrophic type of nutrition. So it eats, it eats nutrients from mother's blood. So it's hematotrophic nutrition. So we have discussed what is going on during first week of embryogenesis and let's go to the second week of embryogenesis. It will be in the second part of this video. Thank you for your attention.